then we're going to start with our second talk today, titled Image of the Giant. And I'm really happy to have uh, Raja Kirik here with us tonight. Uh, tonight, I'm sorry. I'm already in the night mode, but or still. Uh, so, Yeno Ariendra and Moong Santoso Prebadi and Mele Yalmomo, who's moderating this talk. And yeah, we met like uh, three years ago in Yogyakarta, and I got a little glimpse of the fascinating work that the two are doing together and also solo, because uh, Yenu will perform tonight in Schwutz later in the night under his other alias called Idra. But I think his work with Idra is also very much connected to Raja Kirik, and they will probably speak about both of these projects, which I will not say much about, but. What's so interesting, I think, is that they inquire into yeah, how ancient narratives are kind of uh, still resonating and relevant today and get actualized over time, over and over again, to respond to the current situation and the histories of oppression, of violence, of resistance. And um, yeah, I'm really interested in your work and I'm happy you're here. And now, uh, just want to quickly introduce to you Mele one more. Um, Mele also presented some of his own work uh, the other day uh, down at the CTM Radio Lab. Mele Yamomo is uh, based here in Berlin and in Amsterdam, studying teaching and creating performance in theater, theater and sound and music. And he has created a number of yeah, sound theater hybrid works here at Ballhaus Naunenstrasse, a theater uh, not far from this place. And uh, yeah, he's an assistant professor of theater performance and sound studies at the University of Amsterdam. And he's also an author, uh, has written uh, books, for example, Sounding Modernities, Theater and Music in Manila, Manila and the Asia Pacific between 1869 and uh, 1946. So, uh, the stage is yours. Please welcome Mela Yamomo, Moong Santoso Pribadi, and Yenu Ariandra. Thank you. Yes. My, yes. My, is my microphone working? Oh, it's, yes, it's working. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, Yenu, uh, Moong. Yeah, yeah. yeah, um, yeah we were thinking, we, we were talking. We, we decided to meet at the hotel, in your hotel. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, three days ago, no, and we've decided that... Uh, I think two days ago, yeah? Uh, two days ago. Yes, yes two days right, ago. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and I thought, yeah, we, 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 we were talking a lot about this project, and we thought we'll just sit here and just talk about what you've been doing and let the audience kind of like um, listen to what the conversation that we're having, no? Yes. Um, <coughs> but, uh, but, yeah, but um, I've... Um, I've uh, I've recently been um, more involved as well in in the scene in in Yogyakarta, but that is most recently. Um, and um, and perhaps um, I know that um, from from reading your bios, I know that you've been you you both work as you have your own individual career as mm -hmm. artists. You've, you also you're not just in music and composition, and, but also in theater. Um, mm -hmm. We even even we even have a common friend. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, or two. Yeah. So. Um, but perhaps you could talk a little bit about your, yeah, yeah your own projects that you're working in Jakarta individually. Um. Yeah. Uh, like the, before we create this Raja Kiri project, basically we are individual artists. So I mostly work in a theater or dance company. I mean to earn money, of course. I mean, and, and then uh, from from that uh, uh, job, uh, basically I also produce my own work that based on traditional Indonesia history, something like that. I think I do it like uh, 10 years, maybe oh, wow. uh, more than 10 years. Wow. Yeah, it's basically the same, like me. So uh, I work for the theater and yeah, theater and dance as well. And in the way also I try always researching about the traditional music in Indonesia, but I want to bring in the different way. <laughs> so, to explore more about the uh, sounds and also about the structure like that. So, yeah. Right, yeah. 
I, this is something I recognize because I think in Southeast Asia, a lot of the art forms always is very hybrid. You no, know? you can never really separate music from theater from dance. It's yeah, yeah, it's, it's together. Basically, yeah, it's basically one packet like that. <laughs> if, if I saw it, I mean, like, uh, if I, like, uh, every art in a, uh, especially is folk art, they kind of like, uh, how to compare it? Maybe like a classic uh, Greek or something like that. That yeah. I mean, like, uh, if you, there is a community, for example, and people don't doesn't know the the difference between dance, theater, music, or even. I don't know, even uh, pencak silat or martial art or yeah. dance, they, they, they don't know the difference. So one community usually is uh, just like school. So every discipline uh, come to this uh, community and they start to work uh, to preserve their uh, um, uh, heritage. Right, yeah, and because um, yeah, I remember I was attending this fellowship of artists, Southeast Asian artists, and there is not even um, a category for theater because yeah. because it's because everything is so 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 hybrid, you know. Yeah. I mean, yes. it, it's, it's yes. there's no distinction mm -hmm. most of the time, and I think this is also here. I am called a hybrid artist, but this is just how mm -hmm. we do things back yeah. in Southeast Asia, and I think this is very much present mm -hmm. in your work in, in Raja Kirik, mm -hmm. and also how you build. How you build this aesthetics and this work um, in this project, and um, so um, I'm sorry that I missed the performance. Um, <laughs> I feel okay. so bad. I feel so 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 yeah. bad. I was working until like I'm, I'm you know, I be, be, living in Germany, I have to work hard, and I was working until <laughs> very late at 10 p.m. And at this point, the queue was very long at Berghain, so I cannot get in anymore. I'm so sorry for this. Okay. But I, but I think that some, did some people come and see, yeah. I, I, there's <laughs> <laughs> that was so cool, I heard, and I'm, I'm killing myself for missing it. But, uh, but I'm sure a lot of these people are also curious about, um, yeah, about how you ended up, um, how, how did you come up with this project, Raja Kirik? Ah, no? Yeah, basically, uh, we try to, uh, I, I don't know, take inspiration for, uh, from the uh, local traditional art called Jaranan. Yeah. So it's a Jaranan folk art. So it's a folk art from the grassroots. Uh, but I think since the 11th century until now, it's still practically active until today and become mm -hmm. like a, how to call it, uh, the, the part of uh, everyday, uh, everyday life people in uh, Indonesia, I mean, like, uh, it's, it's like a, uh, how to call it, ritual or something like that? It's, yeah, it can be like a, not a ritual, like, yeah, can, ritual is the part of that, uh, mm -hmm. is that uh, Jaranan performance. Right, and, and, and these are, these are a kind of yeah, hybrid performative musical dance um, um, practice that, um, and, and where do you, when do you perform this, um, th th this, this event? Um, is it, for, ah, is yeah, it happening no. once a year or? No, it's uh, uh, for now. Uh, okay, Jaranan just for the tourism or something like a village uh, event or like a field ritual or something like that. Okay. It's yeah. almost mm. like, actually, in every day you can find that a Jaranan. Okay. In every dif in different village, okay. like that. So maybe I will show uh, the video yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah, Actually, I uh, like uh, collecting, compile the some video from YouTube. Uh, it's about uh, Jaranan folk art. <laughs>
sa jaranan basically is a is a um, many variety of varian in there as i just compiled it from youtube but uh, yeah this is a uh, what called jaranan mm -hmm. i see that it's it's, it's very spectacular the like big costumes and yeah. but i also noticed that that one parts of the performances was during daytime and parts are during nighttime is are these separate ones or are these or does this run all throughout from day it's to night depend on the on the even basically yeah. but uh mostly it do like uh, all day all day all day and also some in the video this was in the wedding party i see yeah <laughs> they also uh, usually it's like uh uh, from the morning until the afternoon. Okay. So maybe uh, af until the noon is not so much happening, but uh, after noon there is a, like kind of like a trance okay. uh, dance with, uh, with the and the music is getting intense at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you mentioned that wedding. Uh, th this could be performed during wedding. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, and yes. also yeah. different social occasions. Yes. yes. Exactly. Is it just um, purely in the village, or do you see? Would you also see this in the city, like Jogjakarta? Mostly village. Mostly in the village, in the but village. Uh, okay. in Jogjakarta, uh, Jogjakarta particular, it, it also being held in the city. Mm -hmm. I mean, like uh, yeah, in the city center, for example. Okay. It's common. It's okay. common with it. Yeah. So uh, I I will. Uh, I would like to show you about uh, this one. Uh, it's not PowerPoint, but uh, I don't know how to. Okay. So, Jaranan uh, is theatrical Japanese folk dance that portray horsemen riding pu puppet horses. It was actually created in a one uh, thousand forty-one. Yeah. But I don't believe that. Maybe it's even uh, even older. And then. It's a folk dance that developed in the grassroots, and many people say that it simplification or alternative or opposite to the elegant and conservative palace or royal dance. So in the royal dance, of course, maybe it's like ballet, you know, it's very, I don't know, very beautiful, something like that. Right, because um, <laughs> in Java, because this is, mm. this is a practice that is happening in, in Java, no? yes, and in Java yes, there yes. are palaces. Mm. And yes, yes. So outside is, the palace. This is not a palace the... art. No, no. This is, no. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, Jaranan basically tells the story of horsemen that fighting against monster or villain. And then Jaranan is often possessed by the mythical creature spirit or the spirit of powerful figure in society, such as Barong. Barong is a four-legged, dragon-like creature, uh, or Wali, priest. So when you possess by the high priest in the old time, so it's really, really good. I mean, the show is really good. So Jaranan has strong relationship with the political or power shifting in the history of Java between 11th and 20th century. So if we see Java at that time in a 11th century and 12th century, eh, 12, 20th century, 20. we see a lot of uh, kingdom at that time. I mean, a kingdom in the 11th century. Uh, mostly is uh, in the east side of Java. So here the east side of Java, and then, and then. In the same century, there is a big kingdom that also defeat all these small kingdoms. So, we see in the 12th century is changing again. Maybe for the benefit for audience, what we're seeing now is the big island of Java. But yeah, this, but yeah. this yeah. is not Indonesia no? because no, Indonesia no. has about 12,000 islands. Yeah. Yes, this is just the biggest it's island. Only Java. Not yet. Yeah, yeah, in the middle. <laughs> yes. And then. 30th century, 40th century, we have like this Majapahit kingdom, one of the biggest kingdom at that time in Asia. Then 50th century, 60th century. In the 60th century, Muslim kingdom already uh, right. get influence in Java. I mean, like uh, there is a Chirapon and Dema is a Muslim king kingdom at that time. So, but in a few decades, uh, Muslim kingdom already is spread in, in, in Java. So it's, it's changed uh, the ideology, but actually the, the dynasty is the same. I mean, like uh, they, they're still family, although they da doesn't have, a, I mean, like a different religion, they're still the same. So this also Muslim kingdom, 
and a lot of Muslim kingdom. So the changes in the dynasty is, was also affected by the different religions that were coming to Java. Yeah, yeah, because it's for power, you know. If uh, I don't know, it, we we knew that a religion has, uh, you know, a tool for political party to you know to change the power system, something like that. So basically, they are a family. I mean, still, I don't know how to say it, but in a in Java, we don't really have religion actually <laughs> i mean like uh, when uh, hindu buddha came and then they just mix it with pagan and then after muslim come they mix with a uh, hindu pagan buddha muslim it's the same thing i mean like uh, until now i, I, I mean like uh, it, we still found that in, uh, in java yeah, because like uh, i don't know how to call it syncretic <laughs> religion yeah, yeah syncretic religion <laughs> hybrid yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so so that's what happened the fam uh, basically, it's all the family. It's all the the uh, small kingdom also part of family. So, in the 70th century, we have a Dutch trading company. It's still small at that time. In the beginning of 70th century, it's still small. So it located in Batavia, and Batavia now called Jakarta. It's only small, but as I mean, like a Dutch grow. And then they start to occupy the uh, northern side of, of, of Java. So it still does. And then change to the Dutch Indies, East Indies, 17th century, then Japan. And now Java belongs to Indonesia. Mm -hmm. So basically, Java in uh, 11 and 20th century is the history of warfare, the rise and fall of many kingdoms, royal family intrigue, colonialism, and various other bloody events. So perhaps this is why most Javanese, especially common people, feel fed up with all the violence and the war. So mostly of Japanese avoid direct conflict and violence. They prefer symbolic ways to express protest, critic, refusal, and various political statements. They build cultural resistance to art. One of them is art of Jaranan. So I think that's the history of Jaranan. So they, they kind of like uh, affected by the power shifting of the, in, in the Java between 11th and 20th century, something like that. Right, yeah. And I think it's, yeah, it's, it's good to also to point out that um, like because Indonesia being such you know such uh, having all these different islands um, and how many languages exist in Indonesia? I don't know. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. But, uh, like about 250, 300. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I don't. So but in Java we have seven. Seven in Java seven alone. Language, yeah. na native language. Yeah. Active languages. So it, it's it's it's, so imp it's important to think that these um, you know like. Um, that, that Indonesia is, even before the Dutch came, is mm. just this complexity mm. of different languages, different cultures, yes, yes. different music mm. and sound mm. practices. Mm. Um, mm. Um, and we, right now we think of it as one country, but mm. it actually, it's actually a conglomeration of hundreds of different cultures. Yes, so, yes, yeah. yes. I mean, like, the uh, history of war itself, it, it just begin, I think, from uh, 10,000 before Christ. I mean, like, uh, 10,000... PPC. I think the history of war is started from there, from a landlord and a small kingdom to something like that. So we have like a, this kind of long, long history right. of the power, something like that. Right. And Jaranan is one of those folk, um, th those folk um, practices that has survived all these, like the yeah. way that you're yes. saying, it's yeah. like 10th century. century. It's 11th yeah, century. Yeah, 11th century. Yeah, yeah. 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 Starting from Rayok. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, we 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 gonna it. see the history of uh, Jaranan itself. So, in the beginning, Jaranan was a story of villager who want to propose marriage to the royal princess. It it will be impossible, of course. On the journey, he fought of with uh, other suitors, a uh, royal knight and family. He won all the battle and made the parade toward the kingdom. So basically, the story is symbolizing that the common people is has the same power with the royal, something like that. And then in the 11th century, there is a Reok and Barongan art that uh, are two ancient art that inspire Jaranan. So we, we will see 
uh, Barongan first. So Barongan is a dance about mythical creature named Barong. So it's a uh, this creature named Barong. And uh, let's see other. I think in Asia there is a lot of this uh, story about this Barong creature, but I think Japanese is more cute. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like anime, you know, <laughs> not so haunted. <laughs> Barong again is a is it a, it's a dragon or a lion? Yeah, it's a I don't know. It's a dr dragon with a four leg. Okay, yeah. And then the other is Reok. Reok is a dance of Singa Barong, lion-headed yeah. king with a peacock in his its head. Believe me, it's a uh, maybe it's a tw to thirty kilo, yeah, thirty it's kilo. Really and they they use it to hold the mass. So it is 30 kilogram uh, mass <laughs> and hold with your teeth. Okay, this is Reok. So after Jaranan, uh, Reok and Barongan become a Jaranan and then we saw in the East Java a lot of uh, variant of uh, Jaranan. Jaranan. I think it's a uh, elephant until 14th century, something like that. So Jaranan start in the uh, to develop in the uh, East Java, especially in the conflict area or the area that loses the war, because in that time there are so many kingdoms, and then big kingdom came and uh, defeat them all. So these variations did this come from different languages? Yeah, dif or this is different different uh, country, uh, different kingdom. I Kingdoms. Think. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. So we see. So this is variety. I think I wanted to ask before we, we proceed with the with the with the root word of Jaranan because mm. we've spoken a little a little bit about this earlier that mm. because you, we always see these horses and mm. the word Jaran comes from the word horse. Horse, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Is horse. Jaran is horse. Jaranan maybe how to mean a meaning. How to ex explain it in English? Jaranan yeah, is like a toy, nun with the nun in behind. This is not real, not real not horse. Real, <laughs> not real horse. Okay, so. yeah, yeah. Uh, and so this is the reason why we yeah, see yeah, a lot yeah. of horses <laughs> in in, uh, in Jaranan. And then, in the colonial era, we have Jatilan. So it's a new type of a Jaranan. Yeah, it's mostly in the Central Java. Yeah, so it's mostly in the Central Java in the colonial era. So it's an art to mock the royal and colonial government. Oh, wow, okay. So something like this. So the Dutch government um, is being, is it, so these are performances to mock them. Yes. Oh. And then from Jat Jatilan, we also have Anggo and Dolala, I mean like also in the colonial era. So Anggo and Dolala addressed to the colonial government. So they act like a drunk Dutch official girl. So something like this. It's not European costume, but <laughs> it's fascinating. So this is the this is how traditionally the Dutch is perceived. No, yeah, but this is I don't know. Idea. Uh, maybe it's, <laughs> it's not the right. Yeah, they try. I mean, like, they try to imitate the the official Dutch uh, uniform, uniform in the 17th century, but uh, I don't know. <laughs> But at least they try. Use sunglasses also. <laughs> uh, and this also Angu. It's like a military. Yeah. No, it's it's just it's fascinating because you, you also have this 19th century operas representing you know Asians and um, and Africans. Uh. But it's also fascinating <laughs> on the reverse how yeah, the Japanese yeah. are imagining the Europeans. Yeah, yeah. I mean, know? like uh, <laughs> we exhibit European also in that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, in a, okay, in a 1960, there's a Jaranan Puto in the east part of Java. It's a, from the inspiration of the local mean of the their giant king called Menak Jinga. So this is a Jaranan Puto or a Jaran, giant Jaranan. So all the performance is a giant, included the horses. The head of the horse is giant. Giant type. And then we 
uh, come to the 21st century, so we have new variant called Gedruk. So Gedruk came from the people in the mountainside as a protest about environmental issue and natural resources exploitation by the government and multinational corporation. So it's uh, really the today's context. I mean, like uh, the this I found this uh, type of uh, folk art is in a conflict area in uh, some part in Yogyakarta in uh, central Java. And this is what's so fascinating because obviously it did not just survive these 11 mm. of it, all these 11 centuries. Mm. It also survived and it's still very, very relevant and important to the lives mm. of the people mm. who are practicing mm. them, including yeah, yeah. contemporary mm. issues um, yeah. Yeah. that yeah. affect them. Mm. So this is very much rooted to the daily lives of the people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, yeah, I will explain it later, but yeah. I mean, like, uh, now it's uh, like uh, the map of Jaranan is in, in East Java and Central Java. Uh, in Sunda or, or West Java, I don't know, as actually. So we, we our reset only, like, uh, focusing in uh, Central Java right. and East Java because we share the same language. Right. So, uh, and Sunda, I, 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 I don't know how to speak in Sunda, of course. So, but, and... Uh, this whole new variant basically is just the major variant. So we have a hundred more uh, of this kind of art, but it's too long to <laughs> explain. So it's just a very, very major variant. So this is Gedruk from the uh, 21st century. So it's basically remind me of a sleep not man or <laughs> with a mask. <laughs> no, but, it's, but also the, they, uh, yeah, they're also evolving. They, they seem yes. to be very yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. contemporary, but still rooted to these imageries. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah may maybe they watch the anime. Yeah, it looks a little bit like, anime. Uh, that was <laughs> Godzilla or something yeah, like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also regarding also the performance and the music, because they also upgrading, like uh, they use electronic stuff there in the music, but sometimes they also do the magic show, like a professional magic show, something like that. So next we will uh, talk about why actually Jaranan regarded as a symbolic or cultural resistant art. So Jaranan is variant, mostly created or developed in the area that loses war or complex area or yeah. Mm -hmm. so, and then Jaranan is al alternative art, where the Jaranan aesthetic is a contrast to the palace, royal, or regime art. So, yeah. <laughs> and then Jaranan strengthen local position and community bound in the political tension between conqueror and conqueror. And then Jaranan mostly using parable, mocking, joke, and various contra narrative that address to the conqueror or regime. Right. And this is a, that image is, this is the, it's a kind of a clown character? Yeah, yeah. it's a clown character. Mm -hmm. It's called Bujanganong character. Bujanganong. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's, it, this is a, like, a, more like, a, I don't know how to call it, uh, uh, symbolize the, uh, I mean, like, uh, people in the, in the, in the grassroots. I mean, like they are small in in the drama. I mean, like in the dance, basically they dance uh, while they fighting against the giant or against the monster. And but after, it's just uh, like uh, fighting and then running, yeah. fighting and running, something like that. Like so make a joke. Make a joke, make right. a joke with uh, with uh, all the villain and the monster. His right. his job to do like that. Right. Yeah, so the symbol of like a common person. Yes, yes. common person fighting a, a, <laughs> again, a huge or something. figure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. huge yeah. figure. And then Jaranan saw local power like immune to weapon and many dangerous act to declare that local people or defeated people still have dignity to or power under the new regime. So why they uh, like uh, do some attractive uh, even because because of that they want to show that we are still have a power something like uh, eating fire, eating glasses or even with uh, immune to any weapon, something like that, or disappear. And then the most important thing about Jaranan is about transcend. So because of 
most of Japanese still believe in a supernatural thing, so trance or possessed by the spirit is one of the most important thing in Jaranan. And the higher level of the spirit that possesses the dancer will make the art local, local area look strong to the outsider. So, so they, maybe they just pretend or I, I just possess by this god, for example, and then, mm -hmm. and then the people also will be, oh, they are really strong. Magically, it's very strong, something like that. So uh, it will make enemy think twice to attack or do something harm. Mm -hmm. That's why I think there's a lo log logical, uh, I mean, like explanation to, to, I mean, like a, to see why this Jaranan type involves many trans in a, in a ceremony, something like that. Right, and so this trans practice is this um, something that is embedded in the music or also in the dance? Um, I think in a whole. I mean, like mm -hmm. as a whole. I mean, like, a, do you uh, ever experiment with uh, trans people huh? in with, in a w traditional way? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, basically, the trans in service of it also with during the performance. Right. So it's uh, interesting. Some okay, even now mostly sometimes they just uh, make it as a uh, entertain like show. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so and this is interesting. Also, if you want to invite Jaranan, the leader will ask. So you want to real trance or just uh, acting? <laughs> really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yes, because they, the need, price will they, be need, they need more uh, <laughs> ritual, like something like that, to preparing. If something they can just so one summon, maybe they not enough strong to handle, so they need to ask more backup. This has happened like that. <laughs> right. But, so, but is the trans part of Jaranan, is this for the performers themselves, or is, does this involve the community who was also watching? Yeah. The, the yeah. Com can be sometimes. I mean, yeah, Jaranan associated yeah. with this uh, trans stand, but actually Indonesia has a lot of trans stand. I um, mean, like, not only Jaranan, they have a, lo a lot, but uh, now we only take Jaranan uh, because it's, yeah, there is a trans stand also in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. and I think you'll explain about the, 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 the trance part of the music um, a little bit later, no? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we see Jaranan banned by the royal or regime several times in his story. In 1965, Jaranan banned in many places because government accused Jaranan as part of communist movement. I think 1965 is, uh, I don't know how to call it. Maybe I have a personal issue with this, with the, with this. Uh, I mean, like tragedy. I mean, in the, in that time, in uh, 1965, we have uh, like a uh, 20 million people genocide at that time. I mean, like m mostly do by the military government and also by civil, who also actually the civil is being. I don't know, controlled by the government, yeah. right? So this, the is, this is the Sukarno regime. E, no, no, it's Suharto. Suharto. Sorry, it's the Suharto regime. Suharto yes, yeah. So there's so much killing. And With the transition, Sukarno to Suharto. Yeah, transition. Right, from Sukarno to Suharto. And because it's only happened in 1965, of course it will be affect uh, the family. I mean, like uh, our generation family. I mean, like uh, I have uh, my grandfather is uh, also killed by this uh, tragedy and also changed how my father grew up and then he, he also I mean like a, what we we are grew up also uh, like affected by this tragedy right yes yeah, so perhaps as for, mm. for a context i think that what was fascinating is that in southeast asia after the decolonization of the different mm -hmm. colonizers i think what followed suit immediately was the cold war and i think that the, the entire region has been separated into different um, allegiances and um, Indonesia actually was one of the biggest communist um, yeah, country yeah. Um, until around this time when, mm -hmm. when the government decided through, mm -hmm. um, through Sukarto to switch from communism mm -hmm. towards, um, towards this more um, capitalist government. And mm -hmm. then there was this um, witch hunt for, for mm -hmm. the communist mm -hmm. um, um, party. No? And, and I think many people, particularly in the big cities, were in, also in the villages were involved mm -hmm. in this. And mm -hmm. you have your own personal stories about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I think 
And now this uh, this tragedy basically we we don't really make a reconciliation about that. I mean, like uh, people just silent. I mean, like uh, it's almost 50 years. I mean, more, like uh, yeah. more. Yeah, they, we we already silent about this. Mm -hmm. uh, n n don't talk about that. And um, uh, like uh, now people afraid, government afraid to open about that because because uh, I don't know. Because we have brain wars for, of, of, I think, 50 years. I mean, like in my elementary school, I, we are forced to watch the movie about uh, uh, the how cruel, uh, how uh, cruel uh, is communists communist are. So <laughs> in, the video, that, yes. in the video, <laughs> like uh, the communists killing people, the communists, uh, yeah, I mean, like uh, killing people is this so. So we, we just spend wars and we have to watch it every year, mm -hmm. every year. And then when we see it and in the elementary school, we have to make a report, right? something like that. That's really crazy. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah it's, it's real. And until now, this uh, new generation still thinking about the false narration. I mean, like uh, they still believe this, uh, how to call it? Uh, yeah, false narration. I mean, right, created yes. by the the, go the government. That why we are so interested in the story because in Indonesia, this tra tragedy basically repeated. I mean, like uh, it also happened in the past in the in the 50th century, 70th century. This pattern is most the same. I mean, like uh, they are, they in that time they create myth, you know, to because Japan is. Uh, more belief in myth than uh, than his story, <laughs> right? Yeah, uh, no, and maybe just as a kind of reflection that it, yeah, indeed by the 1960s, I think that this battle between the communist um, side of Southeast Asia and the capitalist side of Southeast Asia was reconfiguring the entire region. I think that we have the ASEAN, which is the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, um, which is this organization that combine that tries to like unify the different countries in Southeast Asia, was initially established as an anti-communist mm -hmm. organization. So, mm -hmm. the, the, so the, it, the first members of this was the Philippines, Malaysia, Singapore, and Indonesia, okay. as a kind of like to fight against the Cambodians, the, the Vietnamese, um, and Myanmar. Um, and so it, was, it wasn't only until the 90s that finally Southeast Asia became, all, final, you know, all these 10 countries became part of this um, organization. And I think as a, as a region, this is a struggle that we've all experienced, but individually, each country also has our own um, experience of, um, of this, um, yeah, this I started, part of history. I started to, to, I mean, like, uh, to call it as a World War III. <laughs> 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 because it's, it's after post, uh, World War World War II, and then I think Southeast Asia or Asia in general is a, or South Africa, uh, America also, yeah. I think we have this kind of like a bloody war. I mean, a really, really bloody war. People mm -hmm. died everywhere, in everywhere. I mean, like a, just Southeast Asia, South America, and some Asia. Right, yeah. yeah. But what is fascinating is that we have this like bigger event happening mm. in the region, mm. almost global. Mm. But Jaranan is one of is, was also involved in uh, in this culturally yeah, yeah, in yeah. this yeah. Um, uh, in engaging this. You know, actually they just accused in the 1965 the Jaranan practitioner or artist just accused to be part of Communist Party. I it uh, it, it cannot be proved, of course. They just accused something like that. So. Some Jaranan artists got killed or sent to jail without trial. That we we see it a lot. I mean, like not all also Jaran, yeah. Like Mostly in the East Java. Especially the artists, because the artists at that time has uh, uh, many influence to the people. So just right. government want to get rid of yeah, this all the artists, something like that. <laughs> so regime at that time saw Jaranan as a threat because political politically it has influenced many people in the grassroots. So today even though Jaranan mostly just for entertainment, tourism or preserving traditional art, but we saw many people also still remember the intention of this kind of art. So and using it to protect their community against the threat from the outsider. So this is the map. So 
you can continue. Yes. <laughs> now we get to the exciting uh, part. <laughs> <laughs> we are in the music of Jaranan. Yeah. The music in Jaranan performance is basically a minimalist and repetitive form of music composition. It's really simple. So it's not like a full of a gamelan orchestra. Right, because like a gamelan is really a huge Yeah, yeah, huge, 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 huge. And in that time, uh, the people in the grassroots cannot have a full gamelan. It's also not so cheap. Yes. And then in the way also they just create, creating with a sum of instrument to take it in some small part of, and then the, the basic, especially the percussion and then now we will continue. And the main instrument common, commonly used in jaranan performance is a gong, kempul, kenong, slow breath, kendang, and a vocal. And this is a gong and kempul. The gong is a, is a play to mark the beginning and the end of the long gending. Gending is like a, a song. One gending, like a song of full, or, or let's say, the comp not the composition, but a song like a one gending. Yes, yeah. Self contained yeah, piece, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's one yeah, piece. Yeah. And the gong very important to mark the end of a, each phrase in the gending. So if a gong player. Uh, if a gong player sleeping in that playing, so the gong will be. <laughs> <laughs> mess. There you go, Everyone can continue. Everyone because can this uh, phrase, uh, like one phrase. <laughs> Continue the another gending, <laughs> yes. so it's important. So Even it's simple, important but important job, <laughs> hard job. You know, waiting of waiting. Yes, yeah. and kempul is played as a bass on gending. So actually, not only means of bass, but this is give more stronger the the root, the tonic of the right. the. Yeah, the tonic. Yeah. Uh, the, tonic yeah. the tonic, the main key. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Because it's really a little bit difficult to say this is main key because we don't have that. Exactly, <laughs> yes, exactly, yes. We're, we're so practically so translating for the European here. Really <laughs> <laughs> and this one is a uh, kenong. So it's actually also can be called bonang. Uh, kenong, bonang. But it depends. Sometimes they use from the kenong, sometimes they use for, from bonang. Bonang is like a, usually in the gamelan they have like 13, like small, small gong. Depends of the, uh, like they have uh, two skills, lindro and pelok. Right. But now for this basic uh, in jaranan, we only take two or sometimes three. But mm -hmm. this basic is two. Mm -hmm. So in jaranan, yeah, this kenong and then low pitch kenong, usually we pronounce nong. And the height pitch, we can usually we pronounce ning. Ning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, look this. Yeah, actually, how to play kenang basically is the beaten alternately and become is a basic rhythm or pattern on jaranan music composition. Mm -hmm. This is uh, from the beginning of the song until the end. Yeah, all the all the performances always uh, playing the same. Mm -hmm. And it's kendang. Kendang is a, as a percussion instrument is really important to maintain the dynamic, tempo, and the rhythm. Because the dancer movement are also controlled by kendang. Or also kendang player also see the dan dancer. So it's uh, flexible, but they have a pattern there, but it's flexible. Because sometimes the dancer can move and especially when they trance. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this is uh, the following, like a more flexible. Right, so perhaps to translate into a more like European Western musical language. So the, so the, this, um, the first one, which yes. one, it called? The, the Kenong yeah. plays like a, an ostinato, no? Thing, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. The, it just keeps. Passing, yeah, keep, keep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. that keeps, go, that keeps yeah. going, um, and the, the Kendang, can do can play with it, but it could also go. Yeah, can go outside from completely that. Completely yeah, opposite. Yeah, the, opposite. The yeah. Think, yeah. Uh, in a gamelan, a big. I mean, I think in a big uh, uh, set of gamelan, kendang usually is conductor basically. I mean, like a so conductor, like a conductor for the for the orchestra. So we don't use people to you know something like that, but we use kendang. Mm 
Mm -hmm. So like uh, he will count where it will be up or down uh, all the tempo information it, it came from the Kenang player and how he play will people will know okay we change the tempo now okay we, yeah. we change the beat now and sometimes also yeah. they go out from the okay this is finished come uh, we, we come back again yeah. something like that yes yeah, so it could also go out of the yeah, yeah, yeah they yeah. can go out yes. <laughs> and can perform solo as solo a solo yeah. <laughs> and also off beat no yeah off beat. Yeah. yeah of yeah. course polyrhythm something like that okay Yes, this is a slow breath. This is a wind instrument. It's also really important in the jaranan. Mm -hmm. It's really, they, they play melody and really strong sound in intensity. And without pause during the performance. Without pause? Yeah, without okay. pause. Yeah, continue, continue, yeah. continue, continue, continue. He still pause when performing. <laughs> <laughs> No, but this requires a kind of like a circular breathing to yeah. be able to... Yeah, because usually they have a three or two player. Mm -hmm. So if they are very tired for a circle mm -hmm. and then another continue. I, like I think in order to get you into the trance condition... This is important, this it, instrument. This is the guide. I okay. mean, like uh, the melody is guide to, to that, that kind of uh, environment. So why they cannot stop? stop? Mm -hmm. So they must continue all the time. If they stop, Everything will be uh, like uh, started from the beginning again. Mm -hmm. So okay, next. Yeah, in a vocal or MC. <laughs> we <laughs> have. <laughs> it's like uh, our friend Gaber Modus Operandi. They also <laughs> have a, uh, MC like this. It's really like a. Uh, yeah, so vocal in Jaranan music usually they have a two type of a uh, vocal style. Nglerehi. Nglerehi is the vocal who is the follow the rhythm of the gamelan. Or this is already like a, a song, a song like with the lyric. With the lyric. Sometimes the lyrics also has mantra or something like that. This is Nglerehi. And where is Alok? Alok is the vocal noises. This is interesting. They are completely unrelated to the pattern of the gamelan. And the form can be like a screaming, giving the encouragement and or giving emphasis to the particular motion or even like that. So this is, yeah, when they get, yeah, sound effect, when they get started, like, like that, you know, it's following that. giant voice. Or like, Yeah, this is, but it's random. They give scream like this. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the, the, the basic, uh, usually in, in Jaranan, this is the most basic uh, in, the, in the music of Jaranan. Okay, yeah. Yeah, this uh, at the, the Barongan performance, this voice can be like the roar of the tiger or other sound whose quality and atmosphere are equivalent to the purpose of Alok, mm -hmm. roar of the tiger toward the Barong. And the alok usually use a microphone no, to be able to... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. they use mic microphone. And just singing around, something like that. Mm -hmm. Or something they also can become like a dalang, uh, the, the puppet, like ah, the puppet puppeteer, here, you know, okay, dalang? Okay. Yes. Or like MC, so that's why I get MC, they, they will tell the story. Okay, mm -hmm. and this is the giant arrive, the Buddha arrive, like, something, like, like, like something like narration. that. Narration, yeah. yeah. narrator, yeah. narrator. Yeah. narrator. Right, yeah. Yeah, maybe for those who don't know, um, so there's the wayang kulit, yes. the wayang yeah, yeah. puppet tradition mm. in yeah. Indonesia, mm. and there is the master puppeteer who is called the dalang, mm. and his job is to both um, manipulate the puppet, but also tell the story, but mm. also provide sound effects for, yes. the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 for the puppet. Yeah, I mean, yeah. dalang is complete job. I mean, like, that's complete job. <laughs> yeah. But it, this is, uh, yeah, I mean, like, yeah. more people. Okay. So, yeah, this is the basic pattern of jaranan mm -hmm. so this kenong and gong so the sound like ning nong ning gong ning nong ning gong ning nong ning gong ning nong ning gong yeah that, that's it and it goes on and on yeah and, yeah, on. Yeah, and, on. and it, it never changes mm -hmm. it never changes only that okay so this is the the creation of a process in raja kirik music derived from the story of how the Jaranan traditional art was born. Yeah, in this picture we were in uh, Merapi, the volcano Merapi, with the community of uh, Gedruk. Mm -hmm. Gedruk. Gedruk Merapi it is uh, another variant of uh, Jaranan. Right. 
Raja Kiri not just only developed Jaranan music, political awareness of the urgent issue and our problem today is the most important thing in our work. And the spirit and the of a resistance in the music, dance and ritual that exists in Jaranan is the main foundation of Raja Kiri music. That's the so all the element what they have in Jaranan is become our big inspiration mm -hmm. for for Raja Kiri music. Yeah. And so in, in, in many ways, you are connected to this 11th century tradition and you're pushing it further yes, into the 21st yes. century. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's our big, big background, basically. But uh, it's not tell you about uh, the real idea. I mean, like, uh, it, this is just uh, the background of our, our story. Mm -hmm. Something is regarding our personal interests and also what happened today in our background uh, or in our neighborhood, for example. Right, mm. yeah. um, would, you be able, would you like to share perhaps some of the, some of the, the works that you've done? Okay, um, okay. okay. after, uh, for the first time, I mean like uh, me and Mo, we, <coughs> we are like uh, working on the project called Image of the Giant, so it's a, uh, the project that uh, basically inspired by the Jaranan Buto or Giant Jaranan uh, Dance in the Banyuwangi. So we start, first we start from there. Mm -hmm. So because, yeah, I will show the video about that. And this is uh, why we uh, create Raja Kire.
that's uh, the first idea why we make Raja Giri. Wow. And then develop it from there. Yeah, just wow. Yeah, that's really, really uh, impressive. And um, I, <coughs> I see that um, this, this, you, you're a duo in this, um, in this project, yeah. and you, you mostly do the electronics? I mostly do electronic. And, and you here. do more the acoustic? Yes, acoustic. Mm -hmm. And I see that you, you, you create your own instruments. Yeah, I create ah. Yeah, I mean, it's the same type with the uh, with the uh, jaranan. They also use something that not conventional. Uh, conventional. I mean, like a, because they are really low class people, and then they only can buy something, and then they modify it, modify the instrument. Yeah. So from found materials. Yeah. Yeah. yeah for, for for this rajakiri, yeah, I just use the junk or the found material. <laughs> <laughs> And you also work with samples and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I create sample with myself, also programming with myself. Because, yeah, maybe I do like a Jarana stuff because I grew up like uh, with a... Uh, mostly with a uh, Western electronic music and that. So I just want to find a new one. I bet that actually is not new one. I just only translating uh, the Jaranan technique into the digital uh, music. Mm -hmm. So yeah, maybe I only experimental with that. Yeah. Shall we open the discussion yeah. to, to the audience yeah, this time? Um, would perhaps anyone be interested in have questions or comments about um, what Raja Kirik is doing, the project? Thanks very much. It was super interesting. Uh, I have a question because um, before you were uh, saying that in Jaranan, like um, the narratives are a lot of like uh, alternative narratives. They use like mocking and stuff in the storytelling. And if you, I don't know if you also would describe your music now as Jaranan or as something completely different, but. If so, are you also using these types of narratives to tell something in your... Because you say it's a lot about resistance and about like political issues of today and everything, but um, I would like to know what are your methods to, um, yeah, to talk about these things in your music. Yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, I think now, like uh, our music is uh, uh, in the first time when we created, mm, we just uh, put all these things uh, in front of us. I mean, like uh, just uh, what the spirit in it, and uh, and uh, uh, what the instrument they use, and uh, how many beat they 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 uh, play. Uh, but uh, Raja is just interpretation for because we are actually experimental artists, so. Experimental artist, it means that uh, you're not really grassroots people, some, something like that. So that uh, we don't really have an access to go there also, right? We, when we, we, like, uh, we going to do them and then learning how they're making music, we just are looking like an outsider also. I mean, like, uh, yeah, I mean, like, I, I don't know, maybe Moong know, know better than me because he, he grew up in a traditional and uh, me not, but for the for the certain that we really depart on the history of the resistance of the Jaranan. Uh, yeah, I mean like, uh, and we try to translate it into the music. So why we use uh, a lot of uh, brutal stuff, <laughs> <laughs> how to call it? I mean like, uh, or just a piece of of junk or iron because. We want to show the irony and uh, I think about the racist and music, but in the same time, it's, it's also playful and a lot of uh, I don't know how to call it. Yeah, I mean like uh, the music is a is a must be playful, danceable, and the other hand, it also create more irritating sound. So yeah, but. Like uh, about like how to represent about the resistance in our music. Actually, it's not just only to talk about the music itself because uh, this is all the element we inspired by Jaranan and and then the way how 
to creating the music as well we try a little bit uh, or, or we try to bring like a uh, in different different uh form from the the conventional which is uh, already exist and then of course it's so can let's say it's uh, a music is really like an abstract you know to tell direct language not like kind of uh, send or something to tell exactly this is resistant but this is all that's why this forum is really good for us to tell what is uh, Raja Kirek actually coming from so yeah and for the music itself or the composition or that uh, form of the music is totally already uh, outside of the traditional what we can see now still exist in Java so we try to give different style or let's say like that. But speaking about the resistance, is maybe, maybe is uh, we have to explain that uh, in Japanese cultural resistance, uh, maybe is quite, it's, it's really different with the Western perspective, right? Or what do you think? I mean like, a, I mean like a, for, for us, what, what, I mean like a, in our history, for example, a lot of uh, regime or kingdom fall apart because of this uh, cultural resistance. Uh, I mean, like uh, they were even actually only ignorant and disobedient. Only maybe only these two kind. I mean, like uh, attitude. So, but uh, I see that a lot of regime also fall down because of this attitude. So become disobedient and uh, and. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, ignorant in the same time, and also just if we have like a tragedy, we just laughing, and then we, we have a bloody event, we just laughing, something like that. And yeah, I don't know if it makes sense, but uh, it uh, it 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 proved that it really effective in a, in a, in a, our history. I mean, like compare, for example, compare with a. Uh, student demonstration, for example. But of course, I, I really support the, I mean, like a, a student demonstration, of course, I, we support it. But uh, I think this kind of attitude in the grassroots is really effective. It's, it, it, it proven some, some. Right, yeah, and I think your, your description of the syncretic religion, the syncretic culture that Indonesia has, of Java has, speaks volumes about the kind of um, the way that people think that you know that that um, you know like here in Europe there, like most of the wars during the medieval period all the way into the 19th century were driven by by religions mm -hmm. and here we have you know like a, like a multi-religion society that coexists yeah. um, I, mean, I think there's a lot to think about when we think about um, how these multiple religions and identities could coexist in Southeast Asia and, um, and, and, and we could reflect a lot about this um, how much time do we still have um, we have one more question. Um, we have more time for one more question. If not, um, well, thank you for joining us. Um, Yanu is playing tonight at um, Achvuts at, um, at 10, so um, please don't miss that opportunity. Um, and again, yeah, yeah, thank I you. I think the idea is more, most the same with this. Uh, so, so this kind of uh, Rajagiri is uh, like a uh, have inspiration from the Jaranan type of resistant culture, um, resistant art. And then tonight I will perform uh, resistant art in a dance music, something like that. I mean like a contemporary dan dance music in Indonesia called Dangdut. I'm looking forward to hearing yes. this. <laughs> thank you. Thank you again. Thank, yes. you. Thank, you. thank you. Thanks everyone.